everything that is in the phone. Everything gone. Everything will go. We will make your phone as good as new. It will come to the factory reset settings. Amen. So today's message is reset to the factory settings. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you see, there are a lot of advantages of the unstable, by which people get attracted to the unstable version. You know what is that? It lets you enjoy the latest features of new apps, which iPhone has and which Oppo has and all the other beautiful brands have. It lets you enjoy that first of all before it comes to the stable. It builds excitement. Okay? It, it just builds excitement. It keeps you satisfied. Like wow, oh my god. So basically it keeps you hooked to this device, to their company. So that you don't shift, you don't think about any other, you know, device. And what are the disadvantages of the unstable? Your phone would start to behave weird sometimes. Because it's on an unstable platform. Okay? Apps would malfunction. It would suddenly hang. It would suddenly not open. Something suddenly will be erased from your phone. Your important stuff. Your battery could drain. And phone would heat up. And also your motherboard could pop off completely. That's what actually happened. So first time it happened, my motherboard had popped out. Praise God, it was under warranty. So they replaced it. And I found out what, how much uh, the motherboard is for. They said around 20 grand. That's a my God. <laughs> Thank God it is in warranty. Thanks, sir. Yes, amen. So, still, but you know, we have this craving for something new all the time. You know, I want something new. Because change, it is a change. We all love changes. Right? So I didn't mind taking that risk. You know, and just shuffling it between the unstable. And this technician took my phone and he said, I will solve your problem, but yet everything will be erased. Are you fine? Your memories, your photos, your videos, your contacts, everything will be flashed. Will be all gone. So I thought to myself, he said, did you, did you do a backup? I said, no, I think I, I might have done, but I don't mind. Contacts are already on my Google, so that's okay. So, you know, a thought went running in my mind. I said, what if I ask him that can you also erase all my painful and unfaithful phase of my life? Can you also erase the bad experiences? You know, from my past, the ones that remind me of hurting people, the phase of immaturity. Can you erase that? I felt like asking, can you delete the wrong decisions that I took in my past? I said, can you erase all of the pain that I suffered in my past? Can you wipe out the scars that remind me of my wounds, which people gave me along the way? Seeing this came up in my mind. Can you erase the phase when my dad was on his deathbed, suffering from fourth stage of cancer, and none of us could help him? Can you erase this from my memory? Can you format and erase the ones that are, you know, the, 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 the situation that were embarrassing in my life? Can you erase those? But praise be to God, for when I was saved in 2007, within a few days and a month, God started to do a marvelous work in my life. I'll tell you what it is. The first thing he did is he offered me the factory reset option. What is the factory reset? Can anyone guess? The factory reset. The one switch of factory reset changes your entire life. It flashes all the memories. It takes away all the pain and suffering. Born in 316. John 316. What is John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the factory reset. That we need to offer it to people who are troubled, to people who are suffering. Because God gave us that option of factory reset. Yes. Amen? Because all of us have a story, don't we? Yes. Does anyone not have a story of past, of present? And thoughts and worries about future. What will happen? How will I marry? What, what, what will my job be? What will my family eat? Everyone has, you know, back of the mind, those things. But we have found the factory reset. Or rather, God has given us that button of factory reset. Amen? Amen, amen. So you see, I was messed up in my life. And once I was miraculously healed from my stomach ulcers, 
I knew something has been reset in my life. God pushed that button. Now I remember while I used to ride my bike, okay, I used to go from point A to point B and suddenly I used to cry, you know, with my helmet on. I don't know why, what was this feeling? You felt it? Vijayendra has felt it. Praise God. I used to weep, I used to cry, I used to just hold one handle, uh, I mean, one hand I used to hold the handle and the other hand I used to hug myself tight while I'm riding the bike. I didn't know why. I used to weep for hours. I never understood. So the person who brought me to the Lord, I asked this person, I said, what is this? Why is this happening? So she knew. She said, you know what, Manchu? God is dealing with your hurt and pain of your past. He's pouring out His love into your heart right now. He's dealing. He's healing. He's doing His work. Praise God. And I was so happy. And slowly, slowly the weights started to lift up. You know, the weights of pain and hurt. And slowly, slowly I started to feel lighter. And the thoughts used to be, you know, lighter. Amen? Praise God. So first, God healed my physical body. He took away the ulcers. And now He was healing my spirit by taking away all the pain and hurt and the suffering that I suffered all those years. Amen? So the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Has anyone experienced a heart of stone? Have you experienced that you have been rude to people for no reason? Yes. I'll tell you about myself. I don't want to talk about anyone else but myself. That's what exactly started to happen. See, once God resets you, you will want to hit the reset button for everyone in your life. Yes. Then, this is what God does. First He resets you, then He tells reset others. Amen? So, I started to call people out of concern and I started to feel Holy Spirit started to speak He said, you know what? Do you remember you did, you did this? I said, yes. Pick up the phone call. Say sorry. And oh my God, you know, sometimes it's easy to, you know, just call up and message. But it's so difficult to confront some people, you know, and say I'm sorry. Especially when you're in the world and you know, it's not easy to say sorry. So I started to call people and apologize for my wrongdoings, how I have behaved. You know, I called people and repented for my hurtful words which have hurted them. And literally, I, I mean, the phone has been uh, flashed, I would have had the messages also. From years I had those messages which I had sent to people. I started to go and meet people whose life were messed because of me. I have made a lot of mistakes in my life and I have you know, damaged so many lives. I went out of my you know, comfort zone, I went and I met them, I met their parents. It was an embarrassing, embarrassing situation because the parents would think this is the man who, who spoiled you know, our sons and daughters life. And he's coming now here. And with all humility I had to go and I had to ask for forgiveness. And after asking for forgiveness I gave my testimony and said this is what God has done because of which I am here to apologize. Amen. So I messaged so many people and said sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for what I did. And this is what God does when He hits that reset button. He makes you reset everything in your life. So you know when you are living a sinful life, hatred, anger and the bursts of anger and hurtful words and abuse are the fruits of sin. Amen? Do we believe this? So hatred was, hatred was something that I had even for people whom I didn't know. You know, passer eyes. have you felt ever, I don't know if you are felt, but I used to feel for nothing. I used to feel irritated for anyone who passed by me. Just I didn't like that person's face, so I'm irritated on that person. I would have the feeling of hatred. And I didn't know why I'm hating this person. This person I don't know, first time I'm seeing in, in my life, but still I'm feeling a feeling of hatred. You know, you don't have control over yourself when you are living a life of sin. The fruits will be evident. That's what the Bible says. Amen? And you don't have any control over yourself. I said, why am I behaving like this? Today I love children. But in my past, I'm confessing this. When my cousins, cousins used to stay, come to stay in my house, I used to pinch them. I used to beat them. I mean, I'm sorry if my cousins are here watching this. But I'm sorry today I'm confessing. And I didn't know why. I didn't like children. 
And today, my children would testify that I am the only man in my whole building who plays with children like a child. And they come to ask for me, not my daughter. They say, uncle hai kya? Uncle does like, like a full jhut comes to my house, to my door, knocking. He says, uncle, are you coming to play? I will say, this is what God does. This is how he transforms. I was never this person. Amen? Amen. So, hallelujah, praise God for what he's done in my life. Amen? So, you see, freely I receive and freely I give. I receive forgiveness from the Lord. So, who am I to hold the unforgiveness for others? I have to receive, I have to give. Amen? Amen? That's what the fact that we said does in our lives. It doesn't let you enjoy, but it lets your heart enjoy. And it lets others enjoy you more than anything. Amen? Amen. So I forgive those people who have hurted me and I release them from my heart. Amen? So you see, God is always set to reset. Amen? Amen. And God is in the business of resetting lives. Amen? Is anyone here who wants a reset? Beautiful. All of us. Amen? Every time we move out in this, in this world which is filled with sinful people and with sin around us, we need reset. Amen? So God is in the business of transforming lives, changing lives. And with this changing life, this reminds me of a change. Amen? Let's get back to a change. So it is the change that we all like in our, in our lives. Change is necessary. Change is a part of our life. Do you agree to this? Yes. Do we all agree to this? Okay. Change brings a refreshment to the soul. Anything that you change, you move from one place to another, you feel certain satisfaction in life. Did you know our bodies, every three seconds, 50,000 cells die and new cells are replaced, even as I'm speaking right now. 50,000 cells are replaced, they are changed, they die and then new ones come to life. You see, God is into the business of change. Our bodies are, 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 are you know what you say, the examples of change. Our hair grows, our nails grow. It, 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 it is not, nothing is constant. If it stops, the, the blood flows. If the blood stops flowing, what happens? You are frozen. You are frozen, you are dead. The blood has to keep flowing. It has to keep changing its position from A to B. And again, B to A. Only then you have life. Amen? Change is the evidence of life. Amen? So you see, atoms and molecules change their positions. There is a non-living thing on which you are sitting right now. It has atoms and molecules which are changing right now. Everything that you see is changing. Our world that we live in is changing. Amen? Amen. So you see, iron when exposed to air and water, it changes its composition. It starts to Oxidize. I'm just giving you a few examples so that we, this is like the starter, so that the buffet could be digested. Okay? So this, there was this brand new, uh, you know, this company which came up with the water, you know, that they started to serve in bottles and you know what is their uh, quote? They said, it has more oxygen. Okay? Now listen to this, okay? In school I had learned that water, the, the chemical composition of water is H2O. What does that mean? Two parts of hydrogen, one part of oxygen. Okay? Now these people say it has more oxygen. So that means two parts of hydrogen and two parts of oxygen. Okay, you know what, what happens when it is two parts hydrogen, two oxygen? It becomes hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> In simple words, it becomes bleach. Yes. My God, that means they are selling bleach in their online. <laughs> so, and what are you? You try to drink, you, you take it. Now you are naive when you say, Oh my God, good oxygen is good. Let me take that water. And you take that water which has two parts of hydrogen, two parts of oxygen, and you drink it. You know what will happen? I guess all your organs will be bleached and you will be whitewashed from inside out. <laughs> I mean, come on, God has given us the brain, He has given us the discernment. Do some research here and there, it's an information age. You have Google on your, you know, on your fingertips. At least do this earlier, I understand people didn't have, you know. 
So sometimes we, we have to discern, you know, in life, some changes destroy you. Amen? Because just because of your, you know, uh, laziness or you don't want to, you know, it, it can destroy you. But some changes can enhance you. And some changes can bring out your potential. Amen? Amen. So we also know that heat changes the composition of a substance. That is true? Yes. Right? I remember the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.12, it says, If anyone builds on this foundation, that is Jesus Christ, using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay or straw, his workmanship will be evident. Because the day will bring it to light and it will be revealed with fire. Our works will be revealed with fire. That means whatever you we do today for the Lord, whatever. Don't forget that it's going to be tested by fire. Fire is there kept to test your work. And the fire will prove the quality of each man's work. What are we selling today? Our quality will be checked on that day. And if what he has built survives, the Bible says, he will receive a reward. And if it is burnt up, he will suffer the loss. Amen? Amen. So here we see how fire tests, it changes the composition. Okay? So if your works burnt up and changes its substance from substance to ashes, then you are not rooted in the foundation of Christ. But if your work survives, then there is a reward in the world. Amen? Amen. So be aware of this. And this is a changing world and we have to love to change. Okay? Doesn't matter good, bad, who cares? People want to change. For example, you don't like the gym? Change the gym. You don't like the school? Change the school. It's as simple as that. You're not happy in this church? You change your church. Yeah, that's true, right? You don't like a job? You change the job. Change. You don't like friends? Change them. Nowadays, you get it wholesale on Facebook. <laughs> Earlier, we used to make friends, now we added them to our list. <laughs> so, we have changed earlier. See, we have changed our perception of change with this changing world. The perception of change has changed completely. Things that rather than changing the wrong things, we try to change the right things, thinking that that is right. Amen? And when God gives us a chance to reset, we are too busy setting our own agendas and own priorities and our own needs. That we don't want to change things which are you know, causing discomfort in our lives. We are okay with things that are you know, comfortable. I'll change those. I'll change this. But I won't change this. I can't leave this. You know, many people are there. Not supposed to eat. But I can't change it. Here and then I'll have it. And you see, some people change relationships as if they were things. Husband and wife, not compatible. Let's change partners and get better ones. So what happens? Fuse, use, abuse, then refuse. <laughs> Amen. So but let me ask you, is this God's idea of a change? Is this how God planned marriage to be? No. Most people have this big misunderstanding that if we change people and make them like us, then life will be better. Or if I can change this situation to be in my favor, then I will be more successful. So they pull this one down and go on. Because for them that is ethics, they are ethics. But let me tell you, changing the things on the outside of you will never bring the transformation on the inside of you. Amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Rather, by changing the stuff that's inside of you will bring the change that is outside of you. Amen? It is inside out, not outside in. Well, said, said words. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Thank you, change. Amen. So some people are very quick to change. You know, once you learn, you learn something and you're like, wow, I'm going to do this. So we all make promises on the 31st night. <laughs> so many things, you know, we made. We said, I'm going to change for good. And some of the husbands to their wives, I will change for good. She says, you better change fast or else I'll change into something else. <laughs> And the wives don't laugh at the husband because it goes vice versa. <laughs> Amen. So some, you know, some are very quick to change. They say, I'll be there when you need me. Right? But when you actually need them, when you call them also, then don't pick up the calls. Right? 
So see, just like Peter said to Jesus, I'll be there. If you try to harm, I'll be there. Don't worry. I'm there with you. So what did Jesus say? He just meant like, don't try. He told Peter, don't try to change my situation. Don't pity me. Before the cock crows, you are going to change your mind three times, not once. <laughs> so why are we expecting from people to change? We are the ones that need to change. If you change, you can bring a change in others' lives. Amen? So Jesus was saying, don't talk, bring a change that will not only maintain you, but the one which will sustain you. Amen. 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 So if you're not able to sustain the change, then it was never from God. If you're not able to sustain a change that you're trying to make, and you're finding so much difficulty and you're you know, beating your head, like why God, why this flesh is rising again? You know, we need to crucify the flesh, not kill. Crucify it. Amen? So it doesn't come down. But some of us just pull it down again. In our life, straight up their lives. Amen? So you see, if it was not from God, it was from our emotions. Peter took an emotional, you know, stand for Christ. And it's a decision made in flesh. Amen? You can only change with the help of the unchangeable, the ever-sustainable. Jesus Christ. Amen? Many of them did not understand this. That's why they all left him. Amen? And the sustainable change in you will allow, it will always come after the great exchange. The sustainable change can only come after the great exchange. Till that time Jesus was not crucified. No wonder Peter could keep up to his word. Amen? Jesus was trying. He was training them said, come, watch, stay awake, watch, see what I'm doing, pray, so that you will be able to sustain at the time of temptations. Amen? So according to John 1, 1, we see that the great exchange, what is? what was the great exchange? What was the great exchange? The cross. The cross of Jesus was the great exchange. That was the place where he exchanged everything with you and him. Amen? That was the exchange. According to John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we know that Jesus is God. Amen? And the Bible says in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So we have these two scriptures that back up that say that God, Jesus is God, and Jesus is spirit. Amen? So Jesus being God in spirit changed his form from spirit he changed into flesh. Amen? He became a human being like us. Again at the Mount of Trans Transfiguration what happened? He changed from human to a glorified spiritual being. Amen? Why did he do this? He came as a spirit and he came as a, you know, into flesh, as a man. Again, he showed them that I am the one who can come to the spirit again from my flesh. He took Peter, James and John on that mountain. Amen? They had the opportunity to see the change. And after seeing that change, Jesus wanted them to reset and get ready for the great exchange at the cross. Amen? That was their future. Jesus was trying to teach them that, look at me. See when the transformation is happening. After I'm transformed, when you look at me, you will not understand how this happened. But when you go through the phase of transformation, that is the key. Because now I say, thank you Lord for the past hurt and pain. Thank you for what you did in my life. Even though the devils wanted to destroy me, but that you use as a testimony for me to stand here and glorify you. Amen. He healed me and I said, thank you Lord for those five years of pain. If that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have come to the true living God. Amen. 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 So Bible says that He is the same. He's, he's not a changeable God. He cannot be changed. 
He is not, you know, who would say something and do something. He will never change. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen? He is the one who sustains all things in us. He is the one who keeps us holding together with our, all our cells in our body. Everything outside you see will change, but who is inside you will never change. Amen? Amen? Your best friend might change today. We all have friends and they keep changing according to their priorities. They have a, their life. But the true friend that is closer than a brother will never change. Amen. Amen? Your boss might change, but if you are in Christ, he says, you yourselves are gods and priests and bosses. Amen? Amen. Our prime minister might change, but if you are serving the prime minister of the universe, he promises you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our situations will change. The weather around will change, but our God shall never change. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our address might change. We might shift from this place to this, this country, this continent. We might change, we might shift. But nobody can blot out your permanent residential address which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is our God. Unchangeable God. Our, you know, the, this is the, the place of change that we have to come to when we see God working in our lives. You know, we might not have jobs certain times, you know, but by God shall supply all my needs according to Amen. Amen. He is ready to change your situation, but how are we willing to change ourselves today? Amen. That is the question. Our emotions might change, but if you let your emotions become your boss, you will make the hell out of heaven. <laughs> but if you make him your servant, everywhere you go, you will make a heaven out of the heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you see, he did the exchange. Now we all need to do is change. Exchange is done. The remaining change part is ours. Okay? Now, what we need to do? What we need to change? What does the Bible says? How do we need to change ourselves? We need to renew our minds, our thoughts, live a pattern of life which is changed not the old ways of the world. You see, we are a new creation. Don't stay in the past. Now since we are in Christ, we are new. That's what the word says. In the old patterns of your life of sin, change to the new life pattern. Which says in Romans 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not be, you know, do not change yourself once you are in Christ again to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You know, many of us want to do God's will. We are excited, we are on fire. But this clearly says, then, when? When you change your pattern. When you don't go after the thoughts of the flesh, which, which will bring death, but go after the thoughts that come from the spirit. Then you will approve and test what is God's will. His good, pleasing and perfect. Amen? Praise the Lord. Does anyone take a bath? <laughs> Every day? And wear the same clothes which you wore yesterday or day before yesterday? No. We change. Every day we change. We wear new clothes. We wear fresh clothes. We wear perfume. Amen? So also Christ Jesus has washed us from our sins. Amen? The Bible says in Malachi 3 2, He is the one who refines us and purifies us. Like a soap, he cleanses us. Amen? You all take a bath? Amen? From this morning, whenever you use, I mean, the next morning, whenever you use your body wash, or soap, or detergent, to clean yourself, you just pray, Lord, you are the Lord's soap. You cleanse me, Lord, from every sin. Lord, from every temptation that's about to come on my way, Lord, you clean me already, Lord. You wash me by your blood. Amen? So now, the old thoughts have to be converted to new thoughts, new patterns, new way of living, not the old carnal ways. We all we have to do is sustain in Him, with Him, and for Him. Amen. So we are made for His pleasure. Amen. The book of Revelation says that. Amen. We are made for God's pleasure, not our own or not for anyone else's. He says, I make everything new. That's what Christ says. I made everything new. He died on the cross. Right? He crucified sin in himself. Sin, he didn't, he didn't walk in sin. He, he checkmated sin in himself. Now sin cannot escape. That's what he did. And he took it to the cross. And he nailed him. And he said, now take, this is your reward. Sin, you try to destroy my children. 
This is what you deserve now. Amen? So he said, it's a new day, his mercies are new, and every day we live in this newness of life. So today if we have to change anything, then it's our own perspective for looking out on things. We need to change our attitudes towards things, change our thoughts, our old nature. If you read the Bible carefully, there are a lot of promises with regards to change. Amen? Jesus says that you yourself will be changed. Amen? Because you believed in me, that I gave my life for you. Because you obeyed my word and walked according to my commandments, so shall you be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Amen? This is the hope we have, that when we die, we are going to go to heaven. And even, even, before, if we, even before dying, if Jesus Christ comes, we are going to be taken up in the twinkling of an eye. That's what the word of God says. Amen? And let the word of God be true and every man be a liar. Amen? Amen. So the perishable will be changed to imperishable. The mortal will be changed to immortal. I used to only think when I used to read the comics and you know the, the cartoons, immortal is. I saw one day, wow, what a fancy story. I never knew that we would be immortals one day. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. And everything that we went into the past, you know what happened in the past is all worth it. Trust me, when you move on 10 years from now, you will look behind you and say, it's all worth it, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing that. Whatever happened in my life, I know that you were in it and you pulled me through from that. Amen? Amen. So today, be right. Be right with God and make the right changes. Hit that factory reset if needed. Amen? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.